Hey y'all, I'm Craig with the Bickums, and today y'all we're going to be doing a kitchen faucet install of our new Price Fister faucet that we got. Uh, that's a replacement for our 15 year old faucet y'all, so let's get to it. Uh, today, this is what we've got y'all. Uh, this is our old, this is our old Price Fister Mariel I just took off. I didn't want a video of taking it off. Uh, this faucet's 15 years old. Price Fister has a lifetime warranty as long as you own their products and they will stand behind it, y'all. They have sent us parts for the handle, for the faucet handle. That's what went out again. Uh, it was leaking. It just leaks as it's, you're not using it. It gets all over the countertop. And this time, uh, I could not get it apart. It had rusted together. I soaked it with WD-40, let it soak for about six hours. Uh, nothing. Could not get it to come apart to change the cartridge let Price Fister know, look, I can't get this thing apart. And they were very, very helpful, very helpful. And decided to send us the new version. <laughs> this faucet is uh, discontinued, so it's no longer available. This is the new faucet, y'all. This is the new Price Fister Avalon. It is a 26 series. Uh, the model number is I wanted to tell everybody just in case they wanted to look it up. I got to get my glasses. The model number is GT26-4CBS. So you can screenshot that. This is the new Avalon. Y'all, overall, these faucets are pretty easy to put in if you've ever done it yourself. Uh, you need a few tools. I'm using just, I got to make sure I have a Phillips head screwdriver just in case. I got a couple of them, my crescent wrenches. The hardest thing for me, I've got a wrench somewhere that helps put the nut on from the bottom. Uh, I can't not find it, but I think the last time I tried to use the one I had, the nuts have gotten bigger right here where it's on the bottom of the, uh, the marble and underneath, and it wouldn't fit anyway. So I'm just going to kind of hold it and kind of let Melissa turn it on top a little bit for me at some point and we'll get it as snug as we can. Then I can try to see if I can get my crescent wrenches under there to get, or my channel locks if I have to go get it, to get it snug. But we're gonna get it on, but that's the hardest part. Uh, I do have to lay on pillows. So let's start, I'm gonna start with the, <laughs> yeah, that's my pillows. It hurts my back, I've had back surgery y'all, uh, so I have to lay on something. So I've gotta have something to help my back already on it. All right. Faucet neck, make sure your parts are here, y'all. This is the little diverter. This one's not open. This is the one that still got water on. These things are so neat. The way they do this, this is where your actual feed, your water feed connects. And then you have your two hoses that are gonna go to your hot cold. And you've got this little gadget here. These are so neat, they slide in and out. And this is where your, uh, your sprayer, your sprayer is just a, a slick, like uh, brass, it what what, the, what you do is you just shove it in, and y'all it seals. And to take it off, you take and you push it in, pull it back out. They don't leak. I don't know who the engineers came up with this, but it works really really well, and it don't come off. It's like that gator bite or shark bite, uh, whatever it is. But it works good. All right, it comes with uh, for a four hole faucet. We only have three, so I will not be using the soap dispenser. It comes with the spray nozzle, the neck, and the, the handle, which is right here. So that has your, this is gonna be your feed to your, your faucet, and this is our hot and cold. We've already got the hoses, uh, the spray nozzle, and the soap dispenser. Soap dispenser is very easy. We did use it on our old countertop, but I'm not using it with this one. It's got a piece in the center. You just take your, uh, this is a, a cut in that goes in the bottom for your soap in the, in the container. Just shove it in. You can just stick, you can go ahead if you want to and stick this on top. It has a washer that you just shove this at the top of the handle. So that's what it looks like when you squirt your soap out. Just shove it in. Then you can shove it through just like so, because it comes right out, it doesn't screw on, and then from underneath, the soap dispenser screws right in, just like so. 
and then you know you tighten it up sandwich between whatever your countertop is uh, super easy uh, we just don't use it we did before we put dawn in it and there's your soap uh, we just don't need it. so we do have the new spray nozzle which we can open make sure everything's good and then we're gonna start putting this thing on because I can't do my cooking videos until I have my new sink on I didn't bring my knives, but we do have some scissors. Uh, and y'all, I'm not a I'm not a plumber. I know I know a, a lot. I know a little about a lot of things, and I've learned to do everything myself over the years, uh, just from experience and doing things. Uh, this thing will need to be kind of halfway straightened out, you know. And over time, they do make weights you can buy for this. Uh, I don't. We don't. We've never used one that kind of helps pull the the sprayer back down in there. This one does not come with one, I don't think. Uh, we've got the, I guess this is the brush nickel, I think what it's called. I think that's what the name of it was. Uh, I don't really see the color. Let's see, or stainless maybe. The brush stainless. Oh, they call this one stainless steel. It's just the brush, it's not the chrome. So that's the stainless steel. It has the new uh, connection that'll go on the bottom. So now let's get this thing installed. It does not take too, too long to do this. It's just a little aggravating. I'm gonna go ahead and take all the nuts off. That way Melissa can kind of help. She can put things down. We may have to put the camera on the stand so she can kind of help me a little. Uh, I am gonna be editing this so we'll be putting it all together. So. Uh, take all your nuts and stuff off. I'm gonna put all the pieces where they're gonna go. Our sprayer's gonna go on that side. The nut gonna go down there with me. Uh, the sprayer is really easy, y'all. All you have to do with the sprayer is take all your pieces. Like I said, it's a little aggravating because it's not hot water hadn't run through it yet. Run it through all the way through and get it in. And then just drop it down in the hole that you want. Whatever side you want your sprayer on, just drop it in. That one's going there. We've got our centerpiece. It has a, a nut, a square little washer. Just take everything off. Except the plastic one. The plastic one stays on the top to protect your countertop. Put that one down in place. Now you will be guessing to see if you can get it, uh, you know, kind of in the middle. These will go down with me because I'll be laying down there hooking all this up in a minute. And same thing on this one. This one you're going to have a big washer. Now this is a little bit harder. This is one of the harder things because you've got to kind of feed things through. They don't just come off. So you got to kind of get your hoses to where you can get one. These parts have places for a wrench to go on and places for this to get off. So you just find your oil to get it turned until you can kind of get it to start fitting over everything. Don't mess your threads up. And you're just going to go one at a time and just easy. It is a little aggravating but, but you've got to get it off. Now you can get the next one. Get it turned. And then you got your single. Same thing with the washer. You only got to do this twice. So just get that one, that one, and that one. This is going down on bottom with me. And you leave your plastic washer on the top. And just feed everything. Same thing. Feed them one at a time in the hole. Let Melissa get a little closer. I may not trip over my pillow. And just start feeding them one at a time in. And get it set in place. It's a pretty faucet, y'all. It is. And we're going to have water here shortly. The hoses are already hooked up. I'm going to get all the rest of my, my parts. Make sure I don't forget anything. Y'all don't mind our kitchen right no, now. Don't mind. We, we, we like normal people, so uh, same old, same old, just like everybody else. Alright, so I've got my... Uh, my little diverter that snaps on. It does have a, I'm gonna need these y'all. It has a, 
I, I didn't bring my knife or nothing. Because, I mean, y'all, you don't need a lot of tools to do this. And this, you know, they charge a lot of money to install this stuff. It just doesn't take, you know, it's not like an all-day project. I'm going to edit this down, but it still doesn't take long. All right, trash. All right, this is the little diverter that's going on the faucet neck. And all it has is a little U-pin. A little U-pin that kind of goes through and you push it. And that's all that holds that thing on once you get it up. I turned this last time. I think this way because that bottom one that hooks to it is kind of long. So instead of going like this and this, making an S, I opted to make a U and then shove it right on is what I did. Make it as easy for you under there as you can because this is the hardest working area under here. Uh, it's, it's just aggravating and it just is. Uh, this is the extra nuts if you have copper. Uh, to connect to your lines and stuff, which I don't. Ours is just a half inch uh, LP or pipe thread and then the 3H to the valves. Little tidbit. We just got back from a convention last week. And I took all this apart before I left. I did stick the hoses just to make me feel better in a pretty good sized bowl. I'm going to let Melissa get down here. Y'all, look how much water came out of those lines because evidently one of those valves are not completely sealing off. Now I can't I haven't seen it dripping, but over four days it dripped. That much water, if I wouldn't have put it in a bowl, would have been would have been all in the bottom of the sink. So make sure if you're gonna leave, just leave your lines in some kind of bucket, bowl, or something just in case because they did leak even though we didn't think they would so just just a tip all right y'all so now i'm under the sink the only one you're not going to be able to see me really do is going to be the sprayer now all i have to do is run the nut up on that sprayer and screw it down tight so as soon as i get that done then we'll start working on the center on the uh faucet and then we'll start working on the, the feed and the, the handle to turn it on and off. All right, everybody. Yeah, we're going to do the center faucet now. So we remember how you took your washers and your nuts off. Uh, this one, you got to put your, I hope y'all can see, you got to put your square washer on. And now I got Melissa holding it. You know, if you get some help, use them. So we're going to put the square washer on and then the nut. I can usually do this with one hand. Now, I'm not gonna, all I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna put it as tight as I can get it with my hand. And then I'm gonna use my big crescent wrench. Let me show y'all what I'm gonna do. Now I've got big boy. All right, so it's gonna open up wide enough and I'm gonna go up like this. You don't have no room to be working like that. So since I don't am, the wrench that I had to do this, they may make a brand new one now uh, that actually works better. Mine wouldn't work before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this crescent wrench and I'm going to go up just like this on it. And I'm going to take my small crescent wrench down below the bottom of the sink. And I'm just going to try to snug it. I'm just going to try to turn it enough. I'm not trying to break my granite. I just need it snug enough that the sink doesn't turn. Now one tidbit. You need to make sure that your sink turns. So I'm gonna let Melissa. Yeah, but I need it to make sure that I that it's tight and turn around. All right. So make sure the tank sink turns. Yours may stop at a certain point. This one doesn't. Make sure it turns into both sinks. And then, that, but that's how we're gonna tighten it up. No, maybe you got more room to work than I do under your sink. Yeah, if you don't have that middle. Maybe you, if you don't have that middle, ours is a double door sink base. All right, so all I'm going to do, now this crescent wrench is heavy, y'all. I know my little one's not, but this one is. And you run out of room under here pretty darn quick between drains and everything else. So I'm going to make sure that I can get this on just like so and just snug it up. I'm going to try to turn it by hand. Hold it, Mama, as, as much as I can. You got it? Yeah. 
and I'm just going to turn just a little bit at a time, just like so. Try not to mess anything up. And once it gets fairly snug, it is. I'm going to take my little crescent wrench, and I'm just going to kind of help me turn it. And that's pretty snug. And it doesn't need to be, you know, just tight, tight, tight. It just to be needs to be good and snug. All right, so that one's on. All right, so we're going to take our next nut. Now, this is on the handle. Ow. This one right here, if y'all can see it, this is on the uh, the hot, cold, you know, the handle. Now, we got to go back on them wa uh, with the washers. And remember, one at a time on you, you got to ring everything. Y'all, the older I get, the less I can see up close. All right. So once that's on there, now we're gonna get our nut. I don't remember. Let's see if the nut's got a flat side. It's the same on both sides. So, all right, on with the big nut. The nut's actually harder to get on than the uh, the washer is. So get it over, get over everything. And once you get all the hoses through, just kind of work with it. All right. Now we got everything. And I can't hardly work around our sinks held up by a plumber's strap. Is the way they did that. It's an undermount sink. So just get it up there. Don't strip it. Don't cross thread it. And get it started. Now we want to try to get it in the middle. Get it kind of centered to hold you good up there. Same thing. Snug it up with your hand. And we're going to go ahead and get that big wrench. And the small uh, the glasses is fogging up. And everything. Just be careful when you're under here working, y'all. Especially if you're doing this for somebody. You don't want to make more work than you have. Make sure. This one's going to be a little harder, y'all. What was that? <laughs> All right, so we got the crescent wrench on it. Melissa's holding it. It's a lot different doing this one, y'all, because there's just not enough room behind this sink. So I'm going to be snugging as far as I can go, and she's going to turn the top. So I'm going to put my wrench on right here, and I'm going to snug, snug. All right, can you turn the top clockwise? All right, so we got that tight enough. All right, so that's all the, the fittings of the Price Fister uh, faucet that's all screwed on. So now we've got to put our little, uh, our little shark, our little shark piece that's going to go on your center, on your faucet. And I'm going to turn it toward, uh, if you're standing up at the sink, it'll be toward the right. It just pushes on, and then the little U-pin, you have to find your holes, but the little U-pin just goes in. You got to reach up there and kind of hold it. Make sure that it goes all the way through. Let me see where my little notch is. Notch is there. Once you ring that notch, it'll start to go through. And you may have to you may have to pull it up and down until you ring that notch a little bit. And then it's gonna take some force to actually get it in there, right there. You just have to keep wiggling it until it goes in. Just like so. Kind of just, you know. Move this back and forth, up and down a little bit until you get that pin to go in. That's all that takes. Now, my glasses is completely fogging up. <laughs> I'm going to take this long one 
off of the uh, uh, the handle, the hot cold uh, of itself. It is a female, it's a female end. Your sprayer is a male end, like so. That's your sprayer. Your sprayer is gonna go straight in the bottle. Now y'all, whenever you put your sprayer in, make sure that your hose is straight and it's not around any other hoses. And all it does is it shoves right in the bottom. And that's it. And it's there. Now over time, this will, you know, this will, this loop will straighten itself out and so on and so forth. Now this long one, like I said, instead of going on this side, it kinked. I opted to go around and actually hook it like so. Now it's still, maybe I can turn it. It needs to be turned the best way that you can to make the hose work better. Let me see, let's look at it and see. This one acts like it's a little shorter. So I may wanna go like so. All right, so this one I'm gonna actually turn. I'm gonna make a loop behind the sink and I'm gonna hook it on the same side, just like so, and just let it kind of, so it's pointing basically toward the sink this way. And that worked out pretty good. It, that didn't make as much of a kink as the other way. All right, so now you have water hooked up already uh, as far as we don't have the hot and cold on. So now, now we wanna hook our hot and our cold. So I ran my plumbing in my house, uh, just like I guess everybody else does with the cold on the right, hot on the left. So now I'm just gonna take, this one right here should be the hot. Should be marked hot. I think that's the, the longer one's the hot. So this is the cold. So make sure you ain't messing with your hose is too much. Make sure everything's not, I got water on that one. Now these, you're just gonna screw them on and we're just gonna snug them with the small crescent wrench. Now you can hold, I got two small crescent wrenches. So you can hold back up. Make sure it goes on straight, y'all. I know you, if you're like me, you're under here and you're ready to get out, but just take your time, snug it with your hand good. And I take my two small crescent wrenches and I use one for backup on here. It's terrible having to wear glasses. So just kind of get it to where it'll hold there and take your other one and once you get it hand tight, you only want to tighten up about a quarter of a turn. We're going to check for leaks. Make sure everything's good. Well, this is definitely a lot easier putting this stuff on when you get new countertops, but so just kind of start to snug it up. You don't want to go too tight because it is a rubber, rubber seal. That's as far as I'm gonna go on that one. So a good quarter of a turn around. Now we're gonna grab the hot. After I blow my glasses off. Oh, sorry y'all. Didn't mean to turn y'all. I have pretty long hoses. Uh, so I've got plenty of, plenty of slack. Snug them up. Same thing. Hold your back up. I'm, I'm holding back up with the little one on the actual pieces on the sink. And then I'm just tightening up the, uh, the nut from the hose. Like I said, about a quarter of a turn. Maybe a little more. And that's it. So we got everything hooked up. Once you do that, 
you can start kind of turning water on and hope and if you have a leak just cut it off uh, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna kind of check everything so we're gonna get y'all out and i'm gonna let melissa video y'all from the outside a little bit and show y'all how i got my setup so as you can see now y'all our house is old our house is we built our house in 1997 uh, this is an older valve and this is a newer valve because this one actually it's got a plastic handle and this one turns and my all my older valves they start to leak out the stem because i can see a little bit of water right here so you can tighten this top up and stop that so i'm gonna go ahead and turn this one on we're gonna start checking making sure we don't have no water flying all on it and you can see the water leaking out right there it has a little bit. I don't never when I, I went all the way out and I kind of turned it back in just a little bit to see if I can get it to stop. So what I do, once in a blue moon, I take my wrenches and I hold it back up and I try to tighten that top because it's got like packing in there. And y'all, you got to work around everything. You got to work around drains. And everything else and then this one not wanting to turn open up y'all my kids get my tools and my tools don't look like my tools no more if that makes any sense some of y'all might can relate all right so i just hold back up and just just snug it up just a little bit and see if i can get that that little bit of a leak that little bit of water to stop leaking there and I'll have to watch it. And you can see where we've had leaks over the years. You know, so I'm sure y'all have had some leaks too. Now this one doesn't turn, if you can see this one. Can you see that Yeah, one? we can see that. This one, it turns, but it only turns like a half a turn and it's on. And that's it. It doesn't unscrew. Oh, this is the newer valve. Oh, no, we do have PEX pipe. Oh, Durapex is what ours is. It's okay. You got it? You good? Yeah. All right, so we're still checking for leaks, y'all. Trying to see. I can't tell. It's almost like I might have seen a little one. This one's good. I don't see anything there. Y'all see me on my pillows, and we use like a little lantern. These are little battery lanterns that we use when we... The electricity, electricity goes, goes out. out. So I'm just trying to see. I thought I saw a little bit of water right here. And if I did there, I have to tighten up just a little bit on the whole thing. But so far, I think. Why don't we just leave everything out yeah, from we'll, under we're there? Yeah, we're gonna leave everything out. I see it right here. So it's still. It ain't gonna be long. I'm gonna have to replace this valve uh, just because it's just getting time. These things don't last. Like I said, these are. This is the original valve. So this valve's been in here in this house since 19. Well. Uh, when we change the cabinets. Yeah, it's been in there over 15 over years. Over 15 years, so uh, I'm going to snug a little bit more. I'm just trying to get that little bit. I see a little, I mean, I'm talking a little bit right there. And I'm going to actually turn this and see if I can get it to stop. Even if the water's not quite on all the way. Just kind of have to play around with it. But as you can see, you don't have any room to work under these sinks. So now y'all know why plumbers actually make good money. I mean, they do have to work around some stuff that we all don't necessarily like to work around. But other than that, I'm good with it. We're not gonna put back the stuff under here. So now let's go up and let's take a look at the faucet and let's make sure oh, everything. Now I'm gonna move these old pillows out of the way. We close out. All right, so there's the faucet, y'all. So this is the new faucet. This is the new uh, the new version of the uh, that took the place of the Mariel. It is a stainless steel. Uh, it does come with a soap dispenser that we don't use, and the sink now needs cleaning because now we've we haven't had water. There we go. Let's get some water out and let's take a look. Make sure we ain't got water flying everywhere under him. Everything looks good. We're gonna make sure we go to our hot side. We're gonna check that. We're gonna, I'm gonna have to cut out that part. Let me give it to Melissa. She can move around. We're gonna make sure, because we haven't used the sink in over a week. 
We got hot water. Thank goodness we were going on vacation. Yep. Well, business trip. Well, you know what I mean. We, we weren't home to have to use our sink. Now I can cook. Now I can do more of my cooking videos. So we have sink now. So that's absolutely wonderful. Now we can clean up the mess. And I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a, it's an aggravating task, just something sometimes that we have to do. Uh, it's a good thing to learn, good thing to know how to do. I like to show my boys uh, how to do stuff so they don't always have to pay somebody to do it. Because as you can see, you can do it yourself. just takes a little bit of know-how and a little bit of time. So make sure that you check Price Fister products out. Uh, I don't make any money from Price Fister. I just do like their products. Uh, they're absolutely wonderful. Customer service is top notch. They have stood behind their products for over 15 years uh, with us. And now we're starting over new. So that's with a we new did. faucet that they sent us. That's right. They sent for free. I didn't pay anything for this faucet. They sent this to replace our one that I could not repair and was leaking. Uh, I don't know what to say. Thank you, Price Fister. So check us out at Small Town Reef Shop here at the shop as well. Uh, you can watch us do our wreath making. Uh, we do do that as well, y'all. But make sure you subscribe. If you got any value out of this video, subscribe to our With the Big Gums YouTube channel. We are getting closer, y'all. We're about 500 watch hours from uh, getting monetized. So thank y'all for helping us grow. Uh, give us a like. Give us a share. We appreciate it. Come back. I'm Craig with the Big Gums and small town reshop and my wife melissa's on the camera <laughs> so we love y'all uh, we thank y'all again so i hope y'all got some value out of this video get your price for y'all bye y'all